Has football changed since you were a player? And if so, what's changed? Yeah, it's changed massively uh, in the last 20 years. Um, obviously, the, the, the finances have changed massively. Um, I think the, um, one, of the big, one of the biggest things that's changed is that they now play on these carpets that I don't recognise. <laughs> You know, where's the mud gone? <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of the crap pitches we used to have to play on. Uh, and you see now, in the depths of winter, they're just playing on these lovely green carpets. And it's amazing the technology that uh, groundsmen have been able to use to, to, you know, it would have been so much easier playing football on those pitches than what it was <laughs> in half day, you know. Um, so that, that's kind of two of the things that have changed. I think people take it a lot far too seriously now, quite oh. frankly. I think we forget sometimes that it's an entertainment industry. It's what, it's what it should be. Um, and I think it has just become, it's become all about business and money and it's not really what, what I went into football for, quite frankly. Um, I always felt like you should be able to, to step on a football pitch and, and try to entertain people so that when they leave at the end of the 90 minutes, they don't feel like they've been robbed of their money because they've just sat and watched a shit game of football. <laughs> um, when you say um, that it shouldn't be taken too seriously, what does that exactly mean? Well, it's a game. It's not life or death. It's a sport. Sport shouldn't be that serious. Sport should be about people yeah, wanting to do the best that they can, be the best that they, that they can at, at what their chosen sport is. Um, but they should be able to do that with a sense of enjoyment. I sometimes get the feeling that there's a lot of footballers that don't enjoy their job. And I don't know, I, I, I played football, so I loved it. I loved football. I loved entertaining people. Uh, and I wanted to, I wanted to live my life. And I got, I got paid a decent amount of money for basically playing my hobby every single day. And it was amazing. And I get the feeling that a lot of players don't feel like that. And it shows. Any player in particular you think not enjoying it? Oh, well, I mean, even, I can, even in my era, you know, there were players that didn't enjoy it, didn't, didn't even want to be a footballer, didn't even enjoy football, but they were quite good at it and they could make a good living at it, so they did it anyway. Um, but I, I think the, the stresses and strains that the, the players are put under now, um, I think they find it hard. They look like they find it hard to enjoy it. Um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna single out individual players. I don't think that's fair. Mm. Um, but on the whole, uh, I, I don't get the sense that players are really enjoying their jobs. And what are, uh, I'm not in, I'm a fan, but I'm not in, um, the industry, so I'm just purely asking this out of interest, but what are those stresses and strains that there didn't used to be when you played? Uh, so I think the stresses and strains are uh, social media, which wasn't around when I played, uh, camera phones, which means that they can't really go anywhere or step a single foot out of line in public because at some point someone will have a camera, someone would have filmed it, and within five minutes of them doing what they were doing, it's all over the world on social media. Uh, and that's, that's hard to have to live your life knowing that there are pitfalls around and knowing that somebody could be video, videoing you that you don't even know. Um, and you could be out having a laugh with your mates. You could say something that was quite funny in the moment and this is what I'm talking about, you know, with policing of words, that you can make a, you can make a joke uh, and yet people would take it seriously. And what you've said in that joke was, I don't know, racist, sexist, uh, whatever you want to, and, and all of a sudden it's out into the ether of the internet and all over the world. And all of a sudden you're now fined two weeks wages. You're, you have to make a public apology because you didn't want to offend the people that, you know, you made a joke about. Get over it. Uh, it just drives me mad that people have to have to do that. You mm. know, the easily offended people need to just. Uh, uh, for me, it's a society where p 
people are just looking to be offended all the time now. And I, I find that quite oppressive, quite frankly. Um, you know, I live and let live. If people want to take the piss out of me because I've got a big nose, carry on. You know, I don't give a fuck. Um, <laughs> and quite frankly, the more people that add that attitude, the better the world would be. Um, because you just can't get offended at words, you know. I just drives me mad sometimes. The world's got to chill out a bit, have a laugh. Stop getting offended by stupid shit. And why are people so easily offended? And then why are they so keen to voice that? Well, it's not only that people are easily offended, they've now started getting offended on other people's behalves of people who aren't even offended. Now that's the fucking brilliant one, that one. <laughs> So if you enjoyed this, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to watch the full Matt Letissier unfiltered interview, watch it here.